looking for speakers. If you want to give a talk, come talk to me. Hey, so I'm the organizer for Codex X. We ended up postponing our workshop last night. Codex X is the women's tech group in town, but everyone's welcome to come. It's just a place for women to feel empowered in learning tech and doing tech. Um, we are going to be doing our session for story writing and design two weeks from yesterday um, at Hack Night. So it'll be on this floor at 6 p.m. Um, and then on February 21st, we're going to be doing a panel discussion with video on um, debugging the gender gap. So everyone is welcome to come to that. Um, I should have a meetup page for that soon. So check us out on meetups. <laughs> Hey guys and gals, uh, we're going to have tonight here, fifth floor, small conference room, we're going to have a uh, Colossus Free Libre open source software group starting up tonight. This is the kickoff for Adam Jenison back there. He's actually a knight, I think. He uh, He's going to give us a uh, an intro to open source, what it is, what are the advantages of using it. He's also going to show us about Git and GitHub. So going to do those things tonight here from 6 to 8 p.m. All right. Sorry, it's meetup.com slash floss dash cha. There we go. Any others? Yeah? You want to? We'll yeah, come on. we got a minute. Uh, my name is Larry Ortega. I'm the chapter leader for SQL Professionals of Chattanooga. Uh, Tuesday night over in the MCS building at UTC, there'll be a panel discussion. So you want to be a data scientist with a couple of data scientists and a couple of managers who hire data scientists. Pizza provided by Tech Systems. It starts at 5.30 with the presentation starting at 6. And we'll go for just about an hour. That's the evening. All right. Um. I think that's it. So uh, today's lunch provided by EPB. Let's give EPB a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> provided by Loopies, if you were wondering where the lasagna was from. Yeah, shout out to Loopies, shout out to EPB. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Alexa Comp is going on right now, is that right? Um, Jake is gonna come up and tell us a little bit, about, little bit more about that after um, our speaker. And today's speaker, all the way from Florida, which part? The Gulf Coast, Tampa. Gulf Coast, Tampa. Tampa. Popped all the way up here to give this talk. Uh, Liz, Liz uh, is a senior business development uh, manager. Got the wrong Liz was, Myers at Amazon. <laughs> former uh, evangelist. Former evangelist in the Alexa division. So um, she's gonna talk to us a little about using Alexa in business applications. So you all give her a warm round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Even we were confused, okay? The day I started, uh, May 2016 at Amazon, I come on as a solutions architect, and I find out that my job is really about evangelism and teaching developers like you how to build skills for Alexa. So across the divide, there's another Liz Myers who starts on exactly the same day, and she's in business development. We're about the same height, and we're both brunette. And, and She's, she's wonderful. She's still at Amazon. I left uh, this past summer to do more consulting and more of what I love to do, which is education and training uh, for building skills with Alexa. And my mission in life right now is to enable anyone to build skills for Alexa because this new voice first economy and technology is just too much fun. So like most technologies, it started with the developer community. But now, I want to empower people who are not developers, and women, and people from all different um, divisions out there to make skills for Alexa. And it's important. We just heard a speaker across the way say, there are not enough tools or ways for non-developers to access uh, this new technology and help define the best practices and the way we, we interact. So, the reason for Alexa in business is because this new chapter was just announced at reInvent. 
And so Bradley Medrock asked me to come and speak at the Alexa conference about what is Alexa for business. Before I dive in and tell you what uh, that entails, I'd just like to get a read on the audience. How many of you have made skills for Alexa? A few of you. How many, are you all developers? No. No. Uh, what, what business area? Interesting. Okay, so Alexa has already made a debut in business here in Chattanooga. You're, you're, you're on the right path. Um, anybody a Node.js developer here? What about Java? Okay, very good. Um, there's a number of technologies you can use to build skills. I just happen to be more familiar with Node.js and JavaScript. I was a front-end web developer. Um, I've delivered mobile apps. And the next chapter is um, voice. Um, I'm also a linguist. I speak several languages besides English. And I was uh, just recently for six months in Germany. Uh, it's a brand new technology over there. And my small claim to fame in terms of Amazon history is because I was the only person that spoke German on the team at the time. I introduced Alexa to Germany and was also one of the first uh, presenters in England, where I've lived for a long time as well. So um, got kind of an international perspective um, to share with you. And, but our focus today is Alexa for Business. And in the context of Alexa for Business, there's both an IoT side to this and a skill making side to this. So let's give you a little demonstration of what you can do in the context of a meeting like this. Alexa, ask Showmaster to jump to the slide about me. Here you go. Great, thanks. So I've put, to wish. <laughs> I've put together a little presentation here that is voice driven as well. So if you have questions at any time, I'm very informal. You can just feel free to interrupt me and we can go if we have supporting slides or graphics, we can just jump there and then find our place right back. And I like this use. A lot of you are nodding your head right now. I'm, I'm really pleased with that because it frees me from the technology which is usually linear. I don't have to go in a certain order. I do have a story to tell and I can tell it within about 15 or 20 minutes. So don't worry, it's not a book. It's a short story on Alexa for business. But I like the fact that I can put some extra slides in the day before and if it comes up, I can jump to them and I've got them at the ready. So this is really useful. The reason we came here is I just wanted to show you that I did uh, go in for the corporate slogan. I don't usually do that, but it was true in this case. I worked very hard. I went to over 80 events uh, in different cities all over, as I said before, both US and then um, about a year ago, started going to um, the UK and Germany. Um, I had a lot of fun working with thousands of developers, teaching them how to make skills, mostly at hackathon events and workshops. Um, I give a half day workshop where I can take you from zero to hero and have you making skills or your developers making skills in your company. And that's tuned to your data and your interactions. Um, so these are just some pictures of some happy folks. If you want to dive in, it's real easy to do. Um, we'll tell you what technologies you need to sign up for in just a bit. Um, and there's even prizes. I'm always um, really pleased when one of my developers sends me an email or takes a picture of the device they earned because their skill went live. They got 100 users within the first 30 days. They got a free dot or a free hoodie or both. Um, you can even earn money if you choose to make skills. If it gets uh, a lot of engagement, I know that there are decent payouts. Um, former colleagues and friends are telling me that you can make anywhere from, let's say, $500 to $5,000 a month. So that's a nice extra. I don't have metrics, unfortunately. Bless you. Um, I don't have metrics on what it takes, what exactly comprises engagement. Um, but you can join the developer community and ask you know, the evangelists um, yourself. Go to events, um, look up the events online. You get a little something more out of every training that you go to. No two of us were exactly alike. Um, my colleagues might emphasize different technologies they like better. Um, I was focused on the beginners at the time. Now, this is in the advanced realm, and I'll show you why in just a bit. 
So getting to our main topic here, the entire time I was an evangelist at Amazon, I really felt like Marshall McLuhan said, the medium is the message. And I felt the whole time we were giving presentations to developers and training and slides were involved, we should be using the technology in order to teach the technology, right? So I have a slide, uh, a voice-driven presentation now, and um, we'll use it a bit more later. Now, Alexa for Business, it's about putting devices now in the workplace. How many of you have a device at home? Okay, cool. I would say that that's a little more than half the room. So you're used to doing things like setting the timer. Does it live in the kitchen? I love, I love this use case where um, I'm baking cookies and my hands are a mess and I'm putting it in the, in the oven and saying, set the timer for eight minutes. Um, and, and the recipe makes six dozen cookies, so we do that a lot on that one. I'm sorry? Oh, how, okay, that's a good question. How many people have more than one device, Echo device, in the home now? Because you get used to it and you just want it to work everywhere, right? I don't want to walk to a certain room in order to interact with my voice. I want to hear music all over the house. I want my reminders, my to-dos. How many of you send messages? You know, I have a friend in Germany, because we're six hours different now, it, you can interrupt their day at odd times and I don't want to interrupt his dinner or something. And I can just say, Alexa, send Stanley Walker a message. To Stanley Walker, right? Right. What's the message? Hey, I'm in the middle of my first presentation. Send me a message back so everybody can see how cool this is. Sending from Liz. OK, so we'll see what we get back. Um, like I say, he's about six hours different, so it's early evening, and uh, he should still be available for this. Anyway, um, with Alexa for Business, now you can bring your personal devices to work and carry on using those same skills you enjoy at home and anything you may have enabled from third-party developers. However, I wanted to just point out, these are the latest, greatest devices. I love this, the new Echo. It's got a much nicer bass and treble. It's really got a great speaker inside. And I like the look of it better, personally. And you can change the covers on it. Fortunately, you can bring any of the Echo Plus devices, the Echo second generation, and the Echo Show at the far right to work. The other devices, just by the way, do not work, uh, such as the Spot. Unfortunately, that will not work with Echo for Business. And the reason is, apparently, it cannot be provisioned uh, to be a shared device and used by multiple users. So that's the main difference with um, devices at work versus devices at home. Devices at home, we set up with the app, either on your phone or online at alexa.amazon.com, right? That's how you set up and choose your preferences. Devices at work can be deployed at scale. So that means a network administrator is determining whether you want to use metric or imperial measurements at work. Um, they might be setting up the time zone for you. And there's a batch of profile settings. Well, there's a batch of settings that they can determine as a given profile and then assign that profile to a whole number of devices. So when you say um, Alexa for business, think all sizes of business, OK? Small to ginormous. And that means you can set up 20, up to 25 devices in one go. So it's much faster for the, for the business rather than pushing the button on each individual Echo. You can buy hundreds of Echoes. You can have them in all your conference rooms. And this is designed for um, bringing a voice to the workplace at scale. Yes. I love this question. Um, the question is, just for everybody else at home on mic, um, whether or not an Echo can have multiple profiles at the same time, um, does it recognize your voice? There are a few questions inside the question. And basically, um, I'm going to answer it like this. You've always been able to have multiple profiles at home. For example, you may have a significant other that likes music different to you. 
So you can change the profile with your voice. And that goes for shopping too, that the, the card that you're billing your Amazon orders to would be that of your wife or, or husband rather than yourself. So we've always been able to share profiles privately in the home. What this means for business is that we are sharing skills as well. And so what they're allowing you to do is to bring your own device to work or use your own device at home and access those skills that are provisioned for you at work. So you can be productive everywhere. In the conference room, that shared device doesn't really hold private information to you specifically. It might hold uh, private information to people on your floor. For example, the Amazon team, I mean the Alexa team might have different skills provisioned for their floor versus another building or another floor, another product group. Do you see what I mean? I'm about to play a short video clip that I think will make what Alexa, it'll give you a picture in two minutes and some seconds, a better overview of what Alexa for Business, the range of things it can do. And then I'd like to speak to um, skill building for work. Um, I want you to watch this video and look for two main things. So far, and this is brand new, only weeks old, the two main things we're looking for are IoT uses of Alexa, meaning um, she controls the environment. If I wanted to start this presentation and I had an Alexa for Business subscription, I would say start my meeting. And you can imagine the lights going dim, maybe the blinds coming down, my connection to the projector, and everything seamlessly coming to life, so I just join the meeting. That's one scenario that's fairly prominent here. And that's what I call the IoT scenario, where you connect things, you control your environment, the temperature, the lights, et cetera. The other big thing that I don't think gets enough press is custom private skills. So you, as developers, or um, business owners where you have your own data and you want to protect that, you can now publish skills for your company and for your employees without having to go through the Alexa skills store or have anybody at Amazon vet your skill and don it um, officially ready for the public. You can just make skills and publish them to your organization. So that's really cool. And the value proposition overall here is that now we've gone from Alexa, I think in the beginning, it's safe to say was a novelty, you know? It's fun to play your music with your voice, but it's not an absolute necessity. We're still able to walk over and turn the, the stereo system on or flip the light switch. However, when you can save time and be more productive, then you have value. Then that's something really valuable. And I'm excited about this because I think it means we can sell our skills as developers to companies and help them um, build these skills. Skills are apps. Uh, skills are synonymous with apps. Thank you. Um, yeah. So that's good because somebody else was wondering that in the audience too. Um, skills is just Amazon, I believe Google's word for apps. Hence there's an app store. Um, but they're free to enable, and now you can enable them with the, your voice as well. So you don't actually have to physically go to the store. Um, in fact, let me just open a new tab here. I'm going to show you that I am online. And when I went here earlier to set up the device with the Wi-Fi here, I'm in the Alexa app right now. And when I get my new device and I want to browse what's available for it, here are the skills, and Jeopardy is a really good, good one, fun one to play. I've already got it enabled, so this is a toggle switch. I don't want to disable it. But you will see when you have a brand new device that that says enable. And you enable it, and it's available to your device immediately from the cloud. You don't even have to download anything. Okay? So that's what skills are and where they live. And up until this point, if you wanted to get your skill onto somebody else's device or share it with the world, you had to publish through the skills store here. I've published a number of them. Um, another way to learn about skills now is when somebody goes viral and shares it via Twitter or this little button here, then you can discover skills. Another way to look at it is you can search. My previous company name was Myers Design. And then you can see all the skills published by your friend or the company you know about. There's Fortune Cookie. And 
when you are working on your own skills, they're immediately available in your account and on your device as well. So I can say at any time, Alexa, Alexa, open fortune cookie. Here's your fortune. Good news from afar may bring you a welcome visitor. Oh, I may have a visitor. Okay. So there's over a thousand uh, sayings in this, in this skill. If you want to enable it later, give it five stars. I don't mind. Um, and then it might even trend. And then I might even get something from Amazon. So that's just a brief demo. And I can teach you how to make a basic skill like this, if we have time today, in like 15, 20 minutes. It's very, very simple to assemble a skill from templates that Amazon have online on GitHub. And I can show you that uh, toward the end of the talk. Right now, what I'd like to do, though, is go back to that movie, bring it back here, so that we can see um, the overview about Alexa for business. OK? You already know how Alexa helps you at home. Alexa keeps you up to date on current events. Alexa, what's my flash briefing? Here's your flash briefing from the Business Review, management tip of the day. And on top of your schedule. Alexa, remind me to pick up the kids at 5 p.m. today. But what if Alexa could help you work more efficiently and be more productive? Introducing Alexa for Business. Now, Alexa can be your intelligent assistant wherever you go. Alexa can help you work from the comfort of your home. Alexa, when's my first meeting today? Your first meeting is one-on-one -on -one with Morgan at 8 a.m. Alexa, join the meeting. OK. Hi, it's Angela. And help you in the office. Alexa can schedule a meeting. Alexa, schedule a meeting on Thursday with the sales team at 2 p.m. That's sales meeting on Thursday, October 26th at 2 p.m., right? Yes. OK, I've added that. And even book a conference room. Alexa, ask the office who booked this room. This room is booked by Allison. Room 114 next door is available. Should I book it? Yes. Alexa saves time and hassle by starting meetings effortlessly. Alexa, start the meeting. Would you like to join the sales meeting? Yes. So you can shine during that important presentation. Alexa, pull up last quarter sales report. OK. Perfect. Alexa helps you stay organized so you can focus on what matters. Time to pick up the kids. All of this is made possible with Alexa for Business, which gives you the tools to provision and manage thousands of Echo devices around your office and enable your employees to use Alexa anywhere they work. With Alexa for Business, it's easy to create contextual voice experiences for your employees and for your customers. Alexa, where's Tyler's desk? In section B3. The more you look, the more you see. Now, Alexa can be used in an infinite number of ways, like helping your employees solve that pesky printer problem. Alexa, ask the office for more printer paper. OK, I've ordered more paper. Should I send your job to printer three? Yes, that'd be great. The only unanswered question is, what will your business do with Alexa? Great. OK, so um, I hope that gives you uh, an overview now. I'd like to separate a little bit of fact from fiction there. All of the IoT scenarios you saw are true. Where she goes, Alexa, bring up the sales figures, that doesn't exist yet. That's a custom skill, OK? So that's still a dream that, that they're selling you. However, we can build a skill that does that, OK? So this is just a quick review of what we just saw. We saw join my meeting, some of the things we saw, not everything. Um, report a printer problem, add one-to-one -one meetings to my calendar. Calendar ring is huge. Not only do you share devices at work, but you share a common calendar. And the calendar knows what room this device is in. It has, it, this Alexa for Business, by the way, adds context. So Alexa is that much more helpful because she knows where this device is located. She is connected to a calendaring system that knows when this room is booked and who has booked the room. Therefore, you can dispense with meeting IDs, passwords, dial-in codes. You can just say, join my meeting. And that scenario where it's double booked and they have to go hunt for another meeting room, that happened to me so much, I would lose most of my half hour meetings to just finding a place to meet. I stopped trying to schedule them after a while. So I can see that, that they've invented something here that is really useful in the real day-to-day -day, uh, work world. 
we just sent Stanley a message and we got a reply back. Um, and of course the reminders and to do's. So I, I find those really helpful. I thought that was a little bit of overkill at first, um, but now I find myself setting reminders all the time because I get so carried away with this stuff that I could speak for two hours and I've only got 30 minutes left. So Alexa, set the timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. Alexa, play my message. Two for Liz Myers from Stanley Walker. Hey Liz, see you soon. Received in the last five minutes. Sorry for the delay, but oh. I am at practice. Received in the last five minutes. <laughs> Great, so I got two quick messages there. And that's, that's really helpful too. I don't know how many of you use this, but when you don't wanna put your glasses on, take a moment to text, you're busy getting ready to do something else, easy communications. I also think that's an underrated feature here. I think once you start doing it, uh, you do it more and more. So what's involved now to wrap up the IoT side of this? What's involved in setting this up for your organization? If you want to go back to, your, uh, to another company and say, hey, this is really easy to do, all you have to do is go to Alexa for Business. There's a separate uh, website for this. And it will show you getting started. There's some quick videos here. They're all less than five minutes. You're going to set up rooms. You're going to give rooms in your organization a name. Then you're going to set up devices, provision the devices for that room. You're going to assign skill groups to a device. So it's easy to take a cluster of skills. A group is a container. And you can assign the same skills to the same uh, office building, let's say, in various conference rooms. And you're going to invite your end users to uh, this program and then they'll be using Alexa for business and that will enable them to use those corporate private skills or custom private skills that you make for them. So that's where the website is. All you have to do is look up aws.amazon.com slash Alexa for business and it will bring you right into this website here. Now I personally have an AWS account which you need in order to make skills for Alexa. You need two things really both free, a developer account at developer.amazon.com, and the AWS account. Now you have to um, put in your credit card for the AWS account, but you're on the free tier, and making skills for Alexa with Lambda will be free forever. So no worries there. I'm gonna sign into the council real, real quick and show you there's a whole new section here, Alexa for Business. Come on, internet. Okay, they're gonna stop me at the verification code. I think I'm not gonna pull out my phone at this time. I've been traveling and they suspect I'm uh, an interloper because it's my first time in Tennessee. So uh, there's security for you uh, in action. Your account is very secure. Um, I was just gonna show you my dashboard where it, where it shows I've successfully set up a few rooms, but I haven't been able to provision any devices. And the reason I haven't been able to is there are two caveats to this. One, Alexa for Business only works in US East, North Virginia at this time. And actually, Lambda should be working better than ever because I've never been this close to North Virginia uh, in my career the last couple years doing this. Um, secondly, um, you need, in order to provision devices, you need a tool that is PC only. It's an EXE application and you cannot download it for the Mac. So therefore I was locked out of it. I'm not gonna go buy a PC now just to do that. But I think this is a, an indicator there's a partnership with Microsoft and they're assuming that your network administrator or your IT persons have um, uh, PCs, uh, IBM type computers in order to do this. So I was not able to go that far, but um, I, I was able to look at Alexa for Business. Oh, here I am right now. I've got access over here. And you can see there's a business productivity group. And then I'm in the Alexa for Business section. Uh, I guess I was outside my console though, so um, I can't show you the dashboard, but that's all it was reminding me of. So you can designate meeting rooms today. You have to have the PC and be using the, um, the, 
the US East server. There's only two servers that work with Alexa. It's either US East or EU West. So EU is more for Europe. Um, you have to provision your devices, then add skill groups to those devices, and then invite your users. And they even provide a template uh, that you know, has all the jargon. I want to invite you to Alexa for Business. It explains briefly what it is, and you can just send those out at scale as well. So um, just two more slides on the IoT portion. The top row here has three uh, applications or clients that work with calendaring clients, shared calendars, that work in helping orchestrate your meetings. Okay, and then the bottom six, or the last two rows, are conferencing clients that work in harmony with the system in order to say, start my meeting. Okay, Amazon bought Chime um, about a year ago, and I found that really useful when I worked there because Chime would call me on my mobile phone or on my, on my computer when it was time for the meeting to start. So all I had to do was pick up the call, and I'm in the meeting. Really easy uh, scheduling and meetings. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what does all of this cost? And I took this information straight from the website I showed you earlier, Alexa for Business. Basically, it's $7 per shared device per month and $3 per user. What that means is you only pay for what you use and you're prorated. So if you try it for a portion of a month and you decide it's not for us, you just stop using it and the billing stops right there. You only pay for what you use, which I think is very fair. There are two scenarios here. Um, in the first scenario, we have both shared devices and enrolled users which again means you can use your private skills in your own device at home and access your work skills. Um, in the bottom scenario, we only have shared devices at work, and that means people physically are using the device together in a conference room or a meeting area. Maybe it's a phone booth. Um, and those devices are set up and controlled by the IT administrator, not by your personal app. Your app governs your device and your skills, and your Amazon account. The other is driven by the Alexa for Business account. And in order to be able to do these things, like start a meeting with your voice, um, you need to be using and a subscribed user of Alexa for Business. In order to use the timer and, and um, add something to my personal calendar, you can use your personal account. If you're using the shared calendar and setting up meetings with your colleagues, it needs to be the business account. Does that make sense to everybody? And the way Amazon sorts that out, by the way, is that when you sign up for Alexa for Business, your business has a domain name, like Amazon, right? So they'd be looking for my email that's associated with that same dom domain name. It was liz.myers at amazon.com. Okay, and that signs me up as a business user. Yes? Yes? You mean you have a home office? Uh -huh. So as we saw in the video, she was using her own personal device at home, mm -hmm. but because she she's a subscriber to Alexa for Business, on her personal device, she has access to her business skills. So she can stay productive, and she that's how she was able to schedule a meeting. And she was adding to her work calendar, one of those three I just showed you. That's a good question. It does get a little confusing, but just think of the scenario. What they want you to be able to do is to use, to work from anywhere. And they don't want to cross the line, where's your personal account? So your personal account just joins your business account. And also, this is, this, there's voice recognition now. So she can recognize in a conference room who is speaking to the device in a shared scenario. So you could, you could build, for example, an RSS feed that was meant for top-level executives and tie that to voice. And if somebody's asking to hear that feed who's not in that privileged group, it wouldn't work. Yes? Yeah, the Alexa for Business will not do that. There won't be a credit card associated with that account. That's set up 
on a separate account. And again, that, that voice ordering, you can have a pin code assigned to that for double security, but also voice recognition. So if I'm in a household and, and I have someone else there trying to order, it's not on my credit card. Yep. I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. How do I handle authentication? Again, I would tie the skill to voice. So if this were something, a, a briefing that were meant for my CEO, I would enable it either only through his private account. I could invite him, for example, as a beta user. I could develop the skill and invite him as a beta tester, which would allow him to use the skill. And it would just work on his private device. If it's a single individual, I could do it that way. I could also make use of um, voice recognition. I could also make use of something on the back end like a passcode. And only when this certain phrase was given, like purple cow, would it play. I mean, you can do anything you want as a developer. Um, but those are a few things off the top of my head. There might be better ways. Let me think about it. Yes. Brilliant question. Brilliant question. I love this question. Yes, a hotel is considered uh, a business. So what this allows you to do is deploy these devices at scale. Another feature different to your private device, think about this. You're in a hotel room, and at top volume, this could be annoying, right? Just like televisions and other things you might be hearing in your hotel room. So when you're provisioning these devices at scale and you're using Alexa for business, one of those profile features that you might be trying to deploy is a volume limit. I think the limit is 10 for that Alexa for business account. So everything that you set up then, all the devices you set up, have that built in. Also, the action button on the top is disabled in Alexa for business so that people can't mess around with these and set them up differently. Um, in the various rooms where you have them deployed. So I found that they've thought this through pretty well. Um, but keep the questions coming. I know there's a lot to this as you start to unravel what this means. Yes? Right. Oh, yes. OK, I see where you're going. Let me explain how Alexa works in just a few slides. Let me come back to you on that one, OK? Despite what I said earlier, I kind of want to go in order now just for time. Right now, we're thinking Alexa in business. So I want to talk about custom private skills and then how Alexa works. And I'll unfold that for you, OK? Is there anything else about the IoT portion of this right now? OK, let's move on. Um, I just wanted to show you that dynamic data is possible, too. This is actually a slide I took from a biz dev deck. And it was answering the question, why now? It's because automatic speech recognition, or ASR, has improved so dramatically in recent years that the likelihood of her understanding what you want has gone up and made it actually useful and not frustrating to interact with. That wasn't so five or six years ago, and that's why this re recent uh, rise. Of course, big data and neural networks help. Very fast algorithms, I get immediate responses. I mean, if I say, Alexa, ask Showmaster to find the purple cow. Here's that purple cow now. It's out of my mouth and on the screen. That was actually slow. She's done it faster before. I don't know uh, what's going on there. Alexa, uh, ask Showmaster for the skill diagram. Here you go. OK, so that's, there's a fade in and big graphic, but you get the idea. It's pretty darn fast. Great, thanks. 
Here you go. One. <laughs> Alexa, go back. Here you go. 25. Okay, I want to jump back to where I was. So, what I want to do now is switch gears just a little bit and talk about what are the custom private Believe skills. Me, we're on slide 25. Do you want to go there now? No, thank you. Okay, where to? Alexa, stop. As you wish. Okay, so what I want to do is just get you thinking now about what you could build for your company or another company. Um, it's just the tip of the iceberg. It's such early days. You can imagine, um, you know, if you travel for business, concur is kind of a nuisance. If she would just find, that's great. Alexa, cancel the timer. You can um, forecast your sales, check inventory, virtually anything you can do with JavaScript or Java, um, Node.js, you can make happen with skills. Custom skills for business is just a matter of publishing, publishing them privately to that organization. Now, the, how you do that is a question that I was expecting some of you might want to know. If you're building skills already, you, you're familiar with the tools and the process, the developer portal. And the interesting thing is I've not seen any new checkboxes or levers to pull to make it a skill for business. So I asked myself, well, how do I designate this then as a private skill? And that comes together in the Skill Management API, or SMAPI. You have to familiarize yourself with some of these things. And there's a manifest now, just like mobile apps. And you designate the skill as private versus public. And that, turn, that makes it show up in the administrator's dashboard. They see it there, and they enable it. And that's one of the skills they can assign to the devices, or assign to a group profile and assign to the devices. Okay. There were some other announcements at AWS this year that I found really exciting in terms of skill building. And we just heard about one of these things this morning, and that's visual uh, computer vision, recognition and computer vision. Um, when, when all of these are live, some of them are in preview right now, which means you have to be invited to, to try them, and they're still in a, a kind of beta mode. But very soon, you'll have access to all of these as well inside of your AWS account. In particular, I could really make use of Translate. Think about um, a skill I made called Phone Booth, which looks up dialing codes for 50-some countries in the world, or 150-some countries in the world. And I make use of an API. I go out and I look up the country. But the country names all change in the German language. So instead of uh, using Google Translate or doing this by hand, wouldn't it be nice to do it programmatically with Translate? Well, that's in preview, but I'm almost there. Um, Transcribe is something that doctors at Boston Children's Hospital and other places I did events were just clamoring for, you know, if I could dictate patient notes in real time as I'm doing an endoscopic procedure, I'm uh, taking a uh, picture with the camera built into the endoscope. I pull a trigger and I take a picture. Why can't I record my notes at that same marker? They navigate by markers, like signposts. Um, they don't have many signposts to go by. It was really fascinating. Um, anyway, I can see a whole a variety of use cases for that. Comprehend sentiment analysis. You no longer have to graph that from Twitter or um, Watson. I saw some, some developers in hackathon projects use IBM Watson to analyze tweets and try and gather sentiment. There's now AWS Comprehend, which looks pretty cool. Um, recognition video in Deep Lens, a HD hardware to build your own solution. Maybe face recognition or recognizing whether the CEO is in the room and I can play the skill, okay? So just some things to take a look at inside your AWS accounts. And in sum, what is actually coming true is that we are going to use Alexa everywhere, okay? So we've got home covered, we've got work covered, and there's been a lot of car announcements at CES and other press, I'm sure you've seen. So as you saw in the movie Her, he had the camera. He, had, he took Samantha everywhere in his shirt pocket. They'd even comment on people they saw walking down the street. They had quite a relationship going. We just heard across the street at the Alexa conference um, from Brian Rommel that, you know, 
emotion and sentiment and personality can be captured. Your personality can be mirrored back to you. And he said, this is going to be very addictive. Well, I thought to myself, this is like relationship forming. In the movie Her, he becomes very fond of his AI. And uh, I'm very fond of, of my device. So, um, and having the service available to me anywhere and everywhere. And so I think this collective dream that was uh, shown in the movie is actually becoming reality. And that brings me to my lovely purple cow that you saw earlier. And this is usually the point where I get developers going on how Alexa actually works. And so I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to explain that to you and cover that earlier question. And then we'll open it up to your uh, further questions. So when I said earlier, Alexa, tell Showmaster to jump to slide seven. What we have here is a wake word. You can choose computer, Amazon, Echo. And that's kind of from the Star Trek uh, era, computer. I use um, Alexa all the time. And then you have to say ask or tell or open the name of a skill. And you say the skill name or the invocation name. And all of that is a little contrived. It might uh, not be the forever technology. I don't know. But we heard there's only so many invocation names in the world. And sometimes they're hard to remember. And so that's a, that can be a little point of contention. But this is how it works. She hears the name of a skill, which gives her good context and a better shot at matching what it is that you want to do or your intent. Now, you speak an utterance, and an utterance contains two parts. It contains a verb. Think of the verb as your intents. It describes what you want to do. And then you can pass in variables, and they're called slots. And that's all Alexa cares about. The real truth here, folks, is that Alexa only cares about intents and slot values. She's like, in the context of this skill, what are you trying to do? And are there any variables I need to uh, pay attention to? And once she grabs that intent, she triggers the um, Alexa SDK is what you're using to trigger a Lambda function with your voice. And that Lambda function processes in another slide here. That Lambda function, it's got automatic speech recognition that hands off to the natural language understanding engine. That goes to a Lambda request on the back end. You process the request in your skill code, and then you send a response back. And it happens all over again. Now we have text to speech, and you get an output in the form of an audio output. You hear the response. And you also get an output in the form of a card. You see the response in the Alexa app. Okay. So that's how Alexa works. There's, there's the big cloud, which is Amazon. Automatic speech recognition, natural language understanding. Those are the core technologies underneath this. And then you have your skill that processes those intents. And later on here, I want to show you not interjections, but intents. If I jump back over here. When I say get my, when I say jump to the last slide to her, or find the slide with the intents, or jump to the slide with the purple cow, as we saw earlier, that phrase, that utterance, corresponds to the get my slide intent. And that's in my code. I have a function called get my slide. And if I say purple cow, she knows what number that is. I had to program that in. There's no software for this. So I had to program all of this by hand. And she jumps to that slide number up here in the URL. I'm working with appending the URL in JavaScript. So that's the magic that's going on behind the scenes here. So that when I say, Alexa, find, uh, ask Showmaster to find the slide with the skill diagram. OK, I goofed it up, see? I have to say the wake word and then the name of the skill. Alexa, tell Showmaster, jump to the slide with the skill diagram. Here you go. OK. So she found, thanks, great, thanks, Alexa. 
as you wish. She found slide 18 there for me based on the keywords skill diagram. That was the slot value that I passed to her. I said jump to the slide with the skill diagram. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, the answer to that is no. I want to say no because I haven't seen it. However, in the command line interface, I don't know if you've seen the CLI for Alexa, and in your dashboard, you have a dashboard. So in your skill, let me show you on my developer account, I've got a dashboard and I can see what intents were invoked, okay? Was that where you were going? I think you were gonna help me out. No, you had a different question. Let's just take a quick peek at this. By the way, I have a little bit more time if you do. I see that we're coming up on the hour. This always happens to me because I just love this topic. Um, I'm happy to stay as long as you have questions. So come on, internet. So in my dashboard, as a developer, I can see my published skills. My published ones, you can tell from my other ones because there's a little arrow in here like this. And I can work on the development version, but not the live version because people are already using it and I might break it. And if I change something, I have to resubmit for um, approval again, and then it becomes the live version. Now here in the metrics, uh, there aren't too many different metrics. This one basically you say open fortune cookie. But in a bigger skill, I would be able to look at customers, sessions, and utterances, and intents. So all the different intents that a person has said to the skill, I could see that. Okay? So as a developer, you can monitor that. You have access to that. Yes, sir. Yes, you can deploy a skill to your company's private cloud via HTTPS. Um, so, um, yes, your skills in Alexa for Business are private. They are not available to the public unless you want them to be. If you have a marketing skill, let's say, you'd go a different route. You'd just publish to the Alexa App Store. Anybody else? When I said top of the hour, you guys went quiet. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Actually, there's a little bit of confusion there. Your personal device remains your personal device, and you never lose the ability to do anything you did just because it's connected to the business or the place where you work, okay? The skills, however, that are made for business are only accessible to you because you work at that company. Remember you got an email invite and your domain was the same as the company domain? So when you're a subscriber and you're participating in Alexa for Business, all that means is you have access at home. This is my personal device. I have access to the skills my company wants me to use or we're using together for convenience and organization and staying um, pro productive. Does that make sense to you? The devices that you see physically in your conference rooms when you go to work, they are just associated with the business. They don't know about your personal accounts or your personal devices. There's a firm divide there. It's just you as a user, sometimes you're at home and you need to do work. So it gives you access to those skills at work. If you bring your device to work, you need to turn on voice recognition or um, your private ID code so that people are not ordering off your device. But that's quick and easy to do too. You just flip a switch in settings and then she only responds to your voice. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Have you, have you ever heard of Operlo? I believe they have analytics tools that you can bake into your skill. And then you can get more granular reporting out of that. I think it's Operlo, O-P-E-A-R-L-O, -E but a Google search for Alexa skill analytics. You, there's one or two competitors to them as well, and you just bake this right into your skill. I've not had a chance to do that yet, but I believe that's what they were called. There's so much to this. Okay, any last questions now? I think it's time to wrap up. Yes. Ah, great question. I love it. There is. Thank you so much for that question. You were almost a plant. Um, I want to go, Alexa, ask Showmaster for the last slide. Here you go. Great, thanks. Okay, no worries. You need these things. If you wouldn't mind taking a picture, you need a code editor. I'm just suggesting Atom. You don't have to use Atom, but you do need a code editor. Echo Sim is the uh, testing uh, tool, the simulator for testing skills if you don't have a device. If you do have a device, you associate it with your developer account and it automatically knows about the skills you're building and you can just use it to test, okay? Now, the big URL that I've got to give you that you want, everybody wants this, is github.com slash Alexa. I want you to take a look at two things here, okay? So github.com slash Alexa, super important. Now, let me tell you how to get started. First of all, on Amazon, you can just Google getting started with Alexa and they'll tell you what order to go. But I personally have a favorite order, okay? The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make the fact skill. So this is no JS, I hope that's okay for you. And when you click on that, there's a whole tutorial here. There's all the source files you need. You actually don't need to do any coding at first. You can simply assemble the skill and learn the process. And the whole tutorial is right here. You just go in order here, and at the very bottom of the page, it'll say, I thought it would say, they might have changed this a little bit. Well, I'm gonna click Get Started and I anticipate that I'm gonna see an order here. So there's a whole progress bar, and you're gonna walk through those steps. It looks like more than it is. If you're a speedy reader, it's gonna take you like 15, 20 minutes to put together your first skill, maybe 30 without me guiding you. Um, but it's all there. Now after the fact skill, if you're ready for a bit more, a little bit more challenging skill, I would do the quiz game. or the how-to skill because there are slot values in the how-to skill and that's the next step is to learn how to pass variables and read variables. So maybe fact, how-to, and the quiz game. Last but not least, and I really do wanna say this, there's a great series of tutorials, but it's a little hidden under the Alexa cookbook. So the Alexa cookbook, and then there's so much in here that what I wanna point you to is the AWS folder and the HTTP folder that was outside of that. So over here in the cookbook, there, was, there are three or four things I think advanced devs should know how to do. So maybe jot this down for your, your learning list in 2018, okay? For 2018, once you build basic skills, what I would recommend you know how to do is incorporate DynamoDB to save session, state, and variables. The guys in the back are nodding because that's the only way to preserve context. Now that she's gone to sleep, she's forgotten about everything we've done. Well, not everything, because I've built in a little DynamoDB. She knows what slide we were last on, but that's because of Dynamo. So you really need to know how to preserve state so a customer can come back and pick up where they left off. You need to know how to bring in interesting information into the skill, how to make an HTTP get or post call, and how to handle the information you get back. That's a big one, and you'll find that in the cookbook. For fun, if you wanna change screens like this and control things 
like the Internet of Things, the most advanced skill you could teach yourself is MQTT. And I've made use of that in this skill, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow over at the Alexa conference. MQTT, it's an AWS service for controlling things around your environment. And there's a great tutorial on it inside the AWS folder here by my, my colleague, former colleague, um, Rob McCauley. He's done a great job here putting together this um, Amazon IoT. And again, in another half hour, you can be controlling your screen like I'm doing here. The last and a bit cheeky ploy for learning how to make skills is to invite me to your next conference or event and we can do a workshop, really. Within two to four hours, we can have everybody go from zero to hero, ninja skill builders, including publishing um, to the skills store and getting your own hoodies and t-shirts and free dots and really getting into this. And really, in conclusion, what I'd like to say to you is, this is the most fun when you roll up your sleeves and dive in and start making her say and do the things that you want to do. It's magical when you can do them with your voice. Okay? Yes, zero to hero is possible with no coding knowledge. It helps if you have some. Um, and typically what I do in a big group like this, like 50, 60 people, is I team people up. Rank, you know, bring your ninja developer and together you can, f you can build an experience. The front end, really all you have to do is be able to speak and build a good interface. And then the back end, in my case, uh, is JavaScript. Okay? So I think that's about up for me with time, but um, thank you very much for your interest. Thanks, Liz. That was great. Uh, Jake, you want to say a few words? First of all, that, was, that was really great. Um, I just wanted to let everyone here know that we'll be hosting an Alexa. Uh, we'll be hosting an Alexa Skills Hackathon here, starting right now, um, lasting until Sunday or, or actually Saturday afternoon. Um, yeah, so we've got some excellent prizes. Uh, we've got excellent tracks. Uh, if you feel like participating and haven't signed up, we can make room for you. 